In my opinion, sexuality should be uh, repressed. I agree, man. You I... should be afraid of it. Yeah. Keep it all wrapped up. Don't sing about it. No, do it on your own. You know? In a dark cupboard. Exactly. Mm. They banned Relax by Frankie Goes to Hollywood. They should have banned that. They should have banned that. That's total filth. I feel sick. It's pure filth. And afraid. It's not even... It's barely five past nine, and he's... Imagine the kids listening. Exactly. What this are they going to think? This is the BBC. This is the Brit The big British, British castle. castle. You don't... There's a disease in the castle walls. Filthy songs like that. That's disgusting. It won't happen again, listeners. Sorry, We're sorry, listeners. Very, very sorry. This is uh, Adam and Joe. I'm Joe, and uh, I'm Adam. That was Billy Bragg, incidentally, uh, with disgusting, this disgusting song about sexuality. It's just he's probably diseased. Well, <laughs> now you've gone too far. <laughs> Have I? Yes. Well, you know that's not going too far. That's like a warning. <laughs> No, it's going too far. It brings disease. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, that's true. Crabs. Uh, what a lovely morning, though. My goodness, this is the kind of morning you feel good to be alive. Wouldn't you agree, Joe Cornish? It's... Yes. Yeah. I worry, though, when you talk about the morning, because I worry our, 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 our non-London listen, uh, listening listeners. I know, but listen... We're not experiencing the same weather. That's... But, but, but I bet you're right across the British Isles. Between us, chilly. listening friends, you know, you have to take it as read that we can only speak from our own experience here in mm. London town, and we're not forcing our London town views or upon weather. you. Or weather. Mm. So, you know, we're just uh, talking about what it's like here and it's a lovely morning good to be alive you know and i hope you're feeling uh happy and positive I'm listening right. friends uh not you uh, but uh you know if you're a bit depressed this morning then stick with us and we'll try and we'll do our best to you know cheer you up and be your friend maybe harriet Harmon is listening she might you know she's had a bad week there and she might enjoy the show why she had a bad week she's uh been fiddling around with her donations oh with donors donors for the mm. labor party gordon gordon brown uh, he's listens. had a tough week, he said for he had a tough brown. week but he loves the show he loves Does he? listening to the show and uh this week he's really going to need it to make him feel that life is yeah. worth living because so far he's got how do you know he listens to the show um oh, oh. now you're asking yeah, I just imagine he does. He look because he looks. No, he like... does because he he gives us the uh, question for text the nation every week. That's exactly right. Yeah, uh, all of that coming up. Incidentally, folks, are the nation's favorite feature. We'll be revealing the winner of uh, last week's song wars and unveiling this week's uh, difficult song wars. Yeah, um, yeah. More about that in a second. <laughs> We've got great music coming up and all sorts of exciting chit chat. Oh, so let's get some more music away right now. What about some shambling babies? I love the band, the babies. <laughs> Excuse me, just having a little cough there at the end of the baby shambles. That was written with Kate Moss, apparently. That's right. I wonder what bits she wrote. Then I'm surprised there weren't more nose flutes. <laughs> and general tooting of wind instruments. <laughs> tooting. <laughs> On that one. <laughs> I'm always amazed that he gets it together to do songs these days. I like him. Oh, yeah, he's a yeah. thoroughly uh, engaging chap, I think, but he's... Have you flicked through his book? Yeah. I don't recommend anyone buy it, but it's worth popping <laughs> into a bookshop and having a little leaf through that book. It's all reprinted like actual photographs of his diary. Yeah, right? it's the kind of book I warrant anyone could produce. I think, you know, they say everyone's got a book in them. Right. I think everybody's got a book like everyone's that. Everyone's got a little scrawly notebook in Receipts, them. Receipts, pocket fluff, <laughs> anything. Yeah, Small exactly. chain, foreign coins. Yeah. Just stuff from the bottom of a drawer, basically. Signature. Squirt a bit of blood on it. <laughs> you're there. You're, you're home laughing. and dry. Exactly. Ka ching Who was the publisher? I can't remember. Can't remember. Um, Kurt Cobain's diary came out a few he years ago. He sort of ago. set the mould in terms of sort of bottom of the drawer tap books. And you know, they still refer to many parts of that diary as kind of amazing mm. gospel truth. Like uh, he he made a list of his. Uh, favorite records in there mm. and that is wheeled out on a regular basis in music magazines oh you should listen to this album it was in kurt cobain's scrawly list of his favorite albums that he wrote in his diary at one stage you know anyway it's interesting though to look at are you not tempted at all to buy no Pete's the doherty book no pete's bock nah <laughs> no because the doc bock it'll be it's surely heading for the bargain bins it'll be very cheap quite soon listen if you had to buy one would you go for uh, the Doc Bock or Russell Brand's Bocky Wok, Bucky Wook? What, if I just had to buy a book? If, you if were forced... I was forced into the situation yeah. of actually buying a book? Exa it might happen, man. It might happen. Terrorism. What's the choice? <laughs> it's the Russell Brand's Bucky, My Bucky, Bucky Wook or the Pete Doherty book. Doherty, Bockety, Wockety. Yeah. The doc uh, book. I'd go for the Doherty, Bockety, Wockety. Would you? Yeah, because it's got pictures. Yeah. Brand's actually written a series of words. 
Which has also been serialised already, so you've probably read a bit of it. It's an assault course for the eyes. Yeah, yeah. I prefer the pictures. They're smoother to look at. Well, less, less pointy. That's true. Than the it? words. Yeah, I love pictures. Ooh, hey, just... you know, you can text us at any point, 64046, or email adamandjoe.6music at bbc.co.uk. Coming up in a second, the results of uh, of Song Wars. We're going to do that now. Or? Let's do that um, ne after, the next, after this next track. Next record. Hey, this is one chosen by me. Uh, this is a, a little bit of kind of uh, sort of solely th th sort of type thing. Mm -hmm. It's one of my favourite artists. This guy's as good as Al Green, I reckon. Really? That's, that's, that's high praise. That's a big claim. This is called Excuse Me by Raphael Sadiq. <laughs> Did he say Claire Rayner there at the end? Yeah, he's talking about Claire, Claire Rayner. Claire Rayner, the first time I saw your thighs, <laughs> Claire Rayner. She's offered him emotional, sexual and... Marital uh, support. support. yeah. <laughs> and that's allowed him... His music was very angry before he met Claire Rayner. She was uh, a lady... <laughs> Good fact. ...of her time, though, wasn't she? You Is know she I'm... not a lady anymore? No, she's not. Has she done a Wachowski Wok brother? She's a man. Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot one of the Wachowskis mm. uh, had a, a little sex mm. transition. There you go. Anyway, sorry, uh, shouldn't ramble. Let's um, deal with... What's it called? <laughs> it's called Song, <laughs> song Wars. Wars. Are we going to do a jingle? Yeah. Let's... Here we go. It's time for Song Wars. The War of the Songs. A couple of tunes by a couple of prongs. Which will you vote for? Which one is the best? We're putting our songs to the listener test. So check it out. Yeah, is that clear? That is quite clear. It sets it all out pretty, so pretty plainly. We are announcing the winner of last week's Song Wars. This is how we're doing it at the moment, folks. Uh, later on in the show, you'll hear our new compositions, which you'll be able to vote for next week. Uh. But uh, did you have trouble this week? Yes. So did I. Big trouble oh, in, man. in Little China. Let's talk about that later. But anyway, let's find out who won. Last week, we had to write songs that featured these three elements. Sincerity of singing, or at least as close as me and Joe can get to sincerity, which isn't very close. Uh, whistling. And uh, we had to deal with... Is everything a joke to you? Is yeah. everything a joke to Is you? Is that what people say? Can you not can you not be serious about anything? <laughs> Who said that to you? People every now and then. <laughs> <laughs> I can never tell if you're being sarcastic. That's what people say to me a lot. Um and the other one was uh it had to be about climate change as well. It had to deal with climate change. And whistling. it had to have whistling. Yeah, whistling, yeah. sincerity and climate change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was a killer combination. It was a perfect storm. It was fun, man. I, the, we had we had some we came of up musitropes. Some... Musitropes. Mm. That's a good name They're for They're the band. individual units of music. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Anyway, we both came up with pretty respectable tunes, I reckon, if I say so myself. So let's see who you thought had the best and we will hear the winner in a second. But we won't hear the loser, because it's brutal. Oh, well, Adam, I'm afraid I've won with 58%, and you got 42 there. Well, that's close, at least. It is close. It's, it, it is very close. I like a close result. It could have gone either way. I was just looking through all the emails we've received during mm -hmm. the week, during that song, mm -hmm. and I was thinking it was looking bad for me. Really? I was coming across a lot of Buxton boats. Oh. Well. Uh, yeah, that's sort of slightly kind of um, patronising <laughs> <laughs> of me. Well, let's yeah, hear... Feel let's... better. Let's hear the winning song. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a little bit gutted, obviously. Well, don't worry, I th you shouldn't have too much trouble this week. Oh well, you haven't heard mine. <laughs> <laughs> this is, uh, this is my winning song. My winning song. Uh, it's called the Global Warming Song. It's, it's in the style of the Kings of Convenience kind of business. The world is dying. Government 
There we go. Uh, that's last week's winning Song Wars song. That's a worthy winner, man. I, I take my hat off to you. Thanks, man. That's uh, good sincere singing there as well. I mean, you can't, you couldn't just leave it sincere, though, I noticed. You had to have the little chatty bits just to... Well, Adam, <laughs> that is representing the dual voices in many of right. our heads. Balance. Uh, you know, the, the intense worry mm. <laughs> and the fear that the sky might fall on our heads. Absolutely. And then the other voice going, probably won't. Be right. <laughs> and that's the dichotomy a lot of us find ourselves in, isn't yeah, it? That's right. Uh, thanks for everybody who emailed in about those songs. A couple of samples here. We've had an email from MKS Drafting Limited. I love MKS yeah, Drafting. Yeah, they're one of the best drafting mm. limiteds well, no, there is. I do all my drafting with them. Chaps, my vote goes to Joe, please. Sounding like Turin Brakes at their best. They will be papping themselves. Turin Brakes. Did that, does that sound like Turin Brakes? <laughs> Bit of an insult to Turin Brakes. <laughs> Whereas Nathan, from South London, says, I'd like to vote for Adam's song in this week's Song Wars. Although I did enjoy both tracks, I felt that Adam's was the most emotionally convincing. And the theme was sincerity, after all. The line about the paper cup resonated with me especially, as I drink tea at work three or four times a day. What was the line about the paper cup? Uh, polar bears are dying just because we want to drink from a plastic cup, actually, it was. Was it? Yeah. Paper, oh, well, paper cup's all right, mate. But, well, you've made this guy recycle his uh, paper cup. Yeah, I mean, you know. Or, oh, no, he's bringing his own mug in. Shouldn't be wasteful. Yeah, but your own mug is the best option, sure. Yeah. Anyway, there you go. Song Wars from last week. In the next hour, we will be unveiling our new efforts. Should we tell people what they're about? Well, the idea was that they'd be... We were talking about uh, I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here last week. Yeah, which I might have to chat about again in, in a second. Yeah, um... <laughs> And so we were going to write songs about it. Well, in fact, we have. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't feel like I have. Well, it was sort of from the point of view of Joe as, as a non-watcher of mm. the show and me as an avid fan. Really. Mm. Do you want to know what happened with my song? Or should we, we'll hold back on that. Yeah, let's tell the story yeah. of, of how we did with those songs in the next Later. hour. But right now, let's play some more music after this fantastic trail. Not a good idea. Tortoise kissing. Very beaky. Tiny, tiny little mouth. He's just kissing the tortoise shell there, though. He's not actually snogging the tortoise. Oh. So that's okay. That's Echo and the Bunny Men with Seven Seas from 1984 and their album Ocean Rain. That was a big hit when we were at school. Do you remember there, Joe? Passed me by. Did it? I was too busy listening to the Thompson Twins. Well, some of the... Because that was... It was the more approachable side of the Bunny Men, you know? Some of the hardcore Bunny Men fans thought they were selling out when Ocean Rain came out. But I loved it. It was a really wonderful album. And I heard it again the other day. It sort of popped up on the shuffle on the pod. Uh, Joe and... Uh, and I went back and de-shuffled it and listened to the whole thing right the way through. And, ah, oh, it's a peach. An absolute smash of an album. That's all the hard lads used to like that one as well the bunny men and i always used to think well there you go we can agree about that mcculloch the sincerity of mcculloch and at one point they were poised to be the biggest band in the world which is a strange thing to consider now it was either it was going to be either the bunny men or you two poised for world domination and then for some reason the bunny men just took their foot off the gas and you two just jammed it right on they're still legendary though oh yeah and in a way they might have a bit more integrity yeah, I guess than so. The U2. Well, I mean, U2 is not you a band. You don't see them can... sponsoring uh, cell phones. No. And that kind of thing. Absolutely. No, but I mean, they're in a different universe now, aren't they, U2? In fact, they, they played a little impromptu acoustic thing at the Union Chapel, uh, The Edge and Bono the other day. Was it The Edge who played it with him? And people were knocked out and they were like, wow, they're actually quite good. You know what I mean? You sort of forget that a band that big actually had something to say and and were good at some point and probably still are you know but uh you're was... very authoritative 
I am, aren't I? I've you should read to... the news. <laughs> I should read the news. Like what Rachel Matthews is about to do. She's gonna, she's gonna do the news reading. We, we don't have music news today, though, do we? Oh, man. We do. I mean, we've got it later music. on, but not right now. Because that's depressing, though, when you can't keep Nothing's happened in music. All musicians have just been sleeping. What are you talking about? Morrissey? Mm. You're not being keep, keeping up with the Morrissey racist row? No. Oh, my Lord. He's put his foot right back in it. Well, let's hear more about that after the news right now. <laughs> Darts of Pleasure there by um, the band Franz Ferdinand. They're so hot right now. Have you heard of them? No. They're from Scotland. Oh, they're so hot right now. The singer, he loves to cook. Oh, yeah, he does that column. He loves cooking. He does, doesn't and he? he writes down all the thoughts he has about cooking in the column. That's good. Yes. And uh, what are they doing at the moment? Have they got a new album that's just been out or is coming out or are they just enjoying themselves? Just having a good time. Darts of pleasure. I know yeah. what that means. What does it mean? It's like uh, darts with lovely little sausages on the end. Oh, darts yeah. of pleasure. Mmm, sausages. <laughs> Delightful. Hey, this is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. I'm holding up a piece of paper and looking at it as if it's going to tell me what's going to happen in this next link. Well, you're going to tell me about... You, you mentioned oh, yes, you, you dropped the Morrissey racism row bomb. Racism I haven't bomb. heard about that. Oh, my Lord. What's been going down? Do you remember 15 years ago he was branded a racist? Well, there's a big thing on Andrew Collins's blog... Um, uh, about this whole thing and Andrew Collins is saying that he was one of the journalists at the enemy 15 years ago who wrote mm. an article about Morrissey and the fact that he was skirting around certain racist or apparently racist issues in a, a song of his particularly a song called Bengali and platforms um, and he Andrew Collins maintains that they never actually branded him a racist but they were just saying like what's he doing so he was never actually fully branded with a red hot brand no with no. the word racist, racist on, yeah. it, on his bottom mm. no that never actually happened the enemy would never do that no <laughs> <laughs> they want to <laughs> they they've, they've to. built the brand <laughs> and they've got the bucket of water the Russell brand and the coal fire yeah but no it never actually happened uh, but still, the whole notion that Morrissey was a bit of a racist stuck. You know, the enemy's assertion was that he shouldn't even be playing around with such, sens such sensitive issues, yeah. do you know what I mean, mm. in his songs. Even so what's he, he done now? So now, he, after 15 years of, of not talking to the enemy, he's gone back and he's given them a new interview and almost immediately got back into the same problematic chatting about immigration this time. And uh, he's he's clearly not like someone who is a racist per se like you know what i mean he doesn't sort of go What's around he said basically here here are the offending uh bits in this interview the interviewer says you live in italy now would you ever consider moving back to britain uh morrissey says britain's a terribly ne uh, britain's a terribly negative this is what morrissey sounds like <laughs> is it yeah and it hammers people down and it puts you back and it prevent uh, it pulls you back and it prevents you like, a lot of this is nonsense britain's a terribly negative anyway also, with the, use, with the issue of immigration, it's very difficult because although I don't have anything against people from other countries, the higher the influx into England, the more British identity disappears. So the price is enormous. If you travel to Germany, it's still absolutely Germany. If you travel to Sweden, it's still very Swedish in identity. But travel to England and you have no idea where you are, says Mozza, and then carries on in a, in a similar vein, basically sort of just saying it's a shame that there's some spurious notion of Englishness has been lost because of the influx of uh, immigrants from... Well, he's not making the problem any better by leaving. He no, should come back and, and be British. Exactly. He's gone off and he lives in L.A. now and he enjoys being a, uh expat in lots of other countries in a way that he's, you know, he's, he's probably polluting the... Los Angelosity of Los Angeles mm, with his mm. with his Morrisseyisms. Mm. So what's he? You know what's the problem with that? Sounds like a fuss about nothing to me. It's a bit nutty. It's a case of Morrissey being a bit thick about it and uh, and sort of worrying about things that aren't really worth worrying about, and the enemy just being delighted to stir up another kind. People of... always say that though, don't they? It's a kind of a, a received bit of wisdom about Britain is that we set uh, people up and knock them down. Mm -hmm. Elvis Costello was banging on about that as well the other day. Did you read that? Mm -hmm. Saying that it's just impossible to be successful in Britain. He got in a big race row in they early, hate, early on in his career. Did he? Yeah, he did. Saying that British people hate success, we let people get to a certain level and then we knock them down. Is that true? Yes, that's true. Who shall we knock down this week? <laughs> what about Leona Lewis? Oh, yeah. She won the X Factor. 
Yeah. Let's, we should have a list of people to bring down. Okay, Who we, else is too successful? We're going to make our list, and while we're making the list, we are going to play you some Jay-Z. This is Rock Boys. That's Jay Z, Rock Boys. Uh, that's mm. from his new album, the American Gangster album, tied into the Rid Riddle Scott film. Have you seen the Riddle Scott? Film? Uh, no. I mixed keep, reports. Mixed reports. I keep being put off it because uh, I keep reading people saying how. It's like a lot of sound and fury, but right. it doesn't really have any impact. Charlie Brooker was writing, uh, saying that, you know, he sat there for two and a half hours and left feeling completely blank. Right, right, right. That's a feeling you, one gets more and more in, in the cinema these the days. Cinema. Don't, don't you feel... <laughs> but no, I'm excited about seeing it. And that's a return to form uh, for Jay-Z there, according to the critics. Riddles can make those films just to talk about riddles again, though. Mm, well, Rid Sometimes. Riddles is an old fella. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's in his 70s. But particularly with uh, Denzel as well. He sometimes gives me that feeling, Washington. Do you know what I mean? Like, I watched Man on Fire, and I came out of that feeling of a bit blank as well. Well, he's got such a kind of set style now. Yeah. Not to say that just because you're in your 70s, you can't make amazing, do amazing things and make amazing films. Well, Cl Clunk Eastwood, for instance. Clunk, he's a genius. He's a septuagenarian genius. And, yeah. uh, uh, did you see the Russell Crowe one? The Riddles one? Yeah, Good Year. The good Year? I did. I love that film. No. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. In, really? You know, in a stupid way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw it and uh, at the Empire Leicester Square, sitting in the row behind me, was John Prescott. <laughs> was he? <laughs> yeah, looking, seriously, looking really grumpy. <laughs> for a change. Looking like I just need, looking like he just needed to escape to the south of France yeah. for some Russell Crowe style slapstick. I wonder if you enjoyed it. It's a stinker. It's well worth checking out. I will do. Was that your choice, the Jay-Z track there? No, that was, uh, that was done by, the... automatically by mm. the special people. Well, listen, this is one that I've picked for you listeners. I, I know that, uh, a lot of beta band fans listen to this show. So I hope you'll enjoy this one. It won't be new to you, but it's from their three EPs album, which if you don't know, the beta band is the one to start with. And, uh, it's really, a uh, trippy, weird little track. Um, is this the one with the ghost on it? The ghost. Do you remember we had supper with him one time? The ghost? No, Steve Mason. From yeah, the no, Beta we went Band. to the studio. Yeah, but he he um, came round for supper at my place. He used to live around the corner. For oh, me. right. And uh, he told me the story about what inspired this song, which is Doctor Baker. And when he was he he suffered from depression for a long time, and uh, in in one of his deepest moments, he got he felt that he was uh, being visited by a ghost that would tap on his window or something like that. A ghost, and uh, he was truly terrified uh, one one evening. And this song is inspired by that. Is it, isn't there an actual recording of something? Isn't in one of their songs there's this actual recording of something spooky? Oh, I don't know. Maybe I think it's there this is. One. I don't know. I can't remember. Ooh. But this is Doctor Baker by the Beta Band. Text the nation. Text, text, text. Text the nation. What if I don't want to? Text the nation. But I'm using email. Is that a problem? It doesn't matter. Text. Now, we were a little bit wishy-washy about Text the Nation this week, uh, folks, in that we're trying to get into the habit of telling you exactly what it's going to be uh, like during the week, posted on the website, so that then you can send us in responses. But we didn't really get it together. It's been a busy week for myself and Joe, and uh, we've been a bit lax on some of our feature duties. But we can tell you now that we are, we actually discussed that we might be using this subject as uh, text the nation this week and i think we are going to ideas for horror films because yes. joe and myself feel that there's a little bit of a paucity of creativity in the horror film genre there's the a crisis in the horror world yeah yeah they're running out of ideas yeah exactly uh and you can tell that because they've used the shroom idea mm -hmm. uh, that's been held in reserve for several years for emergency <laughs> moments and now they've pulled it out. I haven't seen it. Have you seen it? No, I've seen the poster. Good poster. It's a good poster with uh, a, a, a wood and the mushrooms have grown in the shape of a skull. And presumably what's going to happen? The kids... It's about crazy kids who uh, do something that in no way do we recommend you ever do. Yeah. Uh, which is um, hallucinogenic mess mushrooms. with naughty mushrooms. It's very dangerous generally because you've, you've got to have a, a firm knowledge of mushrooms. Generally, they can be very dangerous. That's true. Shouldn't mess with the mushies. Uh, but, and this is a horror film about some kids that do mess with the mushies and it makes their heads and probably their tummies go all wonky and they pay the price mm. kind of thing. Um, and the price ain't nice. The price ain't nice, no. no. So we want you to come up with some better uh, horror film ideas. I had a horror film idea last week, you, you might remember, that in the last seven days has become hideously inappropriate. Oh, really? Due to the passing of uh, Evil Knievel. 
Oh yes, that's last year, right. uh, last uh, show, I had a, an Evil Knievel based horror film idea, and now that's become weirdly apposite. Yes, I can't repeat it, can I? Oh. No. Uh, but I did see a, a, a very good horror film earlier in the year that hasn't been released yet, so you guys won't have seen it. Uh, it's a Spanish uh, horror film called The Orphanage. <laughs> <laughs> It's got a brilliant bit in it, though. Yeah. Okay. And this is the kind of idea we're looking for. It's about a woman, and she was in an orphanage <laughs> when she was little. Oh, no. And she used to play uh, grandmother's footsteps oh, yes. with the other kids. You know, she turned to face a wall, and she'd do the counting or whatever it is, ah. and then she'd turn round. Ooh. Good idea, eh? Very good idea. Later, she buys the same orphanage, all deserted, but haunted by ghosties. Oh, no. And later in the film, <laughs> she plays grandmother's footsteps, but with the ghosties. Oh, my God. So every time she turns round, yeah. she's expecting to see a ghostie. It's very good. That's good. It's very scary. I thought you were going to say, like, sometimes she turns around and her face is all, like, mashed up. That's just... that Really? Her face just turns around and her face is all mashed up. <laughs> is that enough for you? Yes! <laughs> just having a mashed up face. You know, like, at the beginning of the Twilight Zone, the movie, when he's sort of playing peekaboo. No, nah, that's not a mashed up face. That's a werewolf face. Yeah, it's all like a scary... A scary face. A scary face. No, that would be frightening the audience. This is... The Orphanage is a more sophisticated film in which the character themselves feel fear. Okay. And and therefore we vicariously feel fear. Yeah. Because they they got a mashed yeah. up face! <laughs> yeah. Uh. That, you, that, to me, is the difference between a good horror film and a bad one. You know, the character's frightened, you're frightened for the character. In a bad horror film, uh, it's just been a loud noise. Right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Um, so we've had a couple of uh, horror film ideas come in uh, via the email during the week. This is from Clash77. Mm. No, it's not. It's from Rob from Birmingham. Oh. I got his street name mixed up with his real name. <laughs> That's how it is on the streets. Uh, his idea is this. It's called Grass. Right. And it stars Danny Dyer. Oh my this lord! Is good, right? It's a good start. So it's 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 marketable. It's doable already. I'm pretty sure that Dyer would say yes. <laughs> An East End gangster played against type by Danny Dyer <laughs> is forced to hide in a safe house after shopping his gangland boss, played straight by Brian Connerly, uh -huh. but wrongly, to the police. Man, he's got all the casting ideas. Little does he know the house was cursed by gypsies. Oh no! And the grass. Uh, brackets played by Andy Serkis because he is the CGI actor king. Mm. Close brackets in the garden grows out of control every time someone moves in, killing all who try to enter, but also not letting anyone leave. Mm. Yours, Rob from Birmingham. That's good, Rob from Birmingham. That's good. You know, M. Night Shawadi Wadi Shyamalan is doing a film similar to that. I think it's called the. Is it called the Happening or something? And it's all about plants that take revenge and kill people. Oh! It starts with a picnic in the park, and the people picnicking get killed by weeds. Picnic park people. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, but that's really good, uh, Rob. Uh, one more to whet your appetite. You ready for one more? Yes. This is from Peter Green. He emails us regularly. I do believe. Is Thank it? you, Peter. I wonder if it's the uh, Peter Green from Fleetwood Mac. I think it is. That would be great, wouldn't it? What about this idea? It's loosely based on the thriller stroke horror movie Scream, but is instead called Celine. The movie <laughs> features Celine Dion, who plays herself, and she is also the villain of the film. Yeah. Throughout the film, good looking young people will stumble across Celine in places like behind the shower curtain or in a queue for a cup of tea and a sticky bun. <laughs> and whenever they see her, they fall backwards with fright and impale themselves on a sharp object and die a grisly, leg twitching death while crying and saying things like, I don't want to die, and look, there's Celine Dion. <laughs> mm. That's more satire, though, that one, isn't it? That's not a sincere idea for a movie. What are you reading there? Is he put <laughs> the last up? line. Perhaps you, PS. brackets Adam and Joe, close brackets, could make the film in the same way that a film was made within the film Bowfinger, i.e. Celine wouldn't know you were making a film of her. You might see her nipples. <laughs> That's the last bit's got me really excited about yeah. the, the film. There. There's potential there. So listen, come up with your uh, horror film ideas. They don't have to be hugely involved. They can be little one-liners, or we love it if they are hugely involved. Text them to six four zero four six, or email them, or course. email them to adamandjoe.sixmusic at bbc.co.uk. Now you chose this next session track, I believe, Joe Cornish, or at least you had a hand in it. Yeah, no, I did choose it. Yes, okay. Uh, this is Edwin. Edwin Collins, Edwin Edwin Collins. Uh, it was recorded for Mark Radcliffe on Radio 1 on the 19th of September, 1994. And this is A Girl Like You.
What a frightful noise. It's the raconteurs with the, uh, that's the talented Brendan Benson with Jack White. That's their little side project there. And they've got a new album coming out shortly, don't they? They've been busy, I think. You know, it's an ongoing, it's a serious concern, the raconteurs. Hey, this is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. Joe, I imagine you were glued to your television set last night watching Christopher Biggins become the king of the jungle. No, I wasn't. No. I was desperately, desperately trying to complete my Song Wars song. Right, which was last about... Night. Uh, and it didn't occur to you to maybe bone up on the show a little bit to get some ideas? No, I had a limited time window frame. Right, yeah, fair enough. Because I wanted to get some sleep. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I I took the song over the show. We're going to be playing you our uh, I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here songs uh, after the next piece of music. But uh, I'd just like to um, to say that I feel a little embarrassed because I went off on one about Mark Bannerman. Do you remember that last week, Joe? I was mm. talking about the fact that uh, it was an amazingly real and visceral bit of TV when he came out, when he was voted out of the jungle and uh, questioned by Anton Deck, and he was suddenly made aware of the fact that he'd slightly um, gone overboard with his affections. We've had an email in about it. Right. From Sonny in Bath. I curiously share both your knowledge and Joe's loathing of I'm a Celebrity, as my better half is a fan. Mm -hmm. So I absorb a fair bit of it through a kind of reluctant osmosis. I saw this Bannerman on his way out of the jungle, but cannot share your view of his obvious remorse and shame over his sugary harassment of once credible values pops to Keris Matthews. Nicely put. He seemed to me to be completely irreverent regarding the position he'd put his poor missus in. Instead of any kind of apology or even a possible excuse, he chose to use this video soapbox to wax lyrical about how great Keris was and how close they'd become. Who's that from? That's from Sonny in Bath. Well said, Sonny. I think you might be right, you know, and I, 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 we've talked before about the fact that I can be a little credulous, mm. and uh, I think you maybe... You fell hook, like, and hook, hook, line, and sinker I think for so. Bannerman's act. Well, because, you know, the thing is that during the week, the big news was that uh, they all got letters sent to them, the people still in the camp, right? Mm. And they were all read out on air. And one of, and Carrie's got a letter, first of all, from her uh, little children and uh, her family and stuff, mm. and that was very sweet. But that was followed up by a letter from Mark. And it said, uh, keep singing, songbird. Uh, you're doing great or something. I'll be there waiting for you when you get out if you want me to be. Keep singing, songbird. Just keep singing, little My songbird. My precious little princess. <laughs> or I'll shoot I'll you. be there for you when you get out. <laughs> it was like that. And so it was very exciting. And Keris was clearly overwhelmed with mm. joy, I mm. would think. Uh, so I was thinking, wow, there you go. He's sorted things out, like, with his girlfriend. I, I guess maybe called it off with Sarah, his girlfriend. He's going to fly back out there and welcome Keris with open arms. He wasn't there, mate. Wasn't there. When she got out, no sign of the filthy rot basket from EastEnders. That is Mark Bannerman. What's he doing? What's he playing at? He's let me down. He's let Keris <laughs> down. He's let my wife down, who was disappointed as well. And I just you does know. your wife think she he he's a he's a he's quite sexy? No, no, she wouldn't mind a slice of J uh, from Five. <laughs> really? Yeah, a delicious uh, <laughs> slice of J, but Ooh. but she's not having any of Mark. Certainly not. Really? So I felt a little I felt a little <laughs> cheated. I'm imagining J from Five making love to your wife. Now. <laughs> she is too. Um, but there you go. Anyway, I'm glad no, about Hang on a second. <laughs> what are they doing? Uh, now? Yeah. Oh, don't do that. Come on. Um, but I'm glad Biggins won. You know what I mean? That was that, that, that's a good result. He's, he's like a, a good person, I think. You know what I mean? He's like a good person. He, he's very much he like... Appears he does similar an, to good people. He does an excellent imitation of a good person. But anyway, this week's Song Wars listeners are about I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. Um, we both had a, a trying time with them. Mm. We'd explain more after a bit more music. Here's the Foo Fighters. Their, their single comes out on Monday, I believe, and it's called Long Road to Ruin. It's a peach! It's time for Song Wars. The War of the Songs. A couple of tunes by a couple of prongs. Which will you vote for? Which one is the best? We're putting our songs to the listener test. So check it out. Mm -mm -mm. Yep. Song Wars. And it's uh, Song Wars time. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is the part of the show where we both compose a song on a theme and you, the listeners, get to decide which one's the better one. It might be difficult for you this week uh, because I haven't heard Adam's and he hasn't heard mine, but we've both agreed that we don't think we've... Well, I, I don't think I've done a very good job this week. No, I was in severe trouble 
I was in bad trouble. Yeah, I was in trouble time-wise. I usually do my song on a Wednesday evening. Right. So I've got a bit of a window in case it's it's wrong. Mm -hmm. This week did it last night. What, what Started you... about ten. Oh, that's no good. I know. Finished about one. I mean, there's, well, that's not bad. Three hours, that's all right. Yeah, but wait till you hear it. <laughs> it's a mess. Yeah. I played it to my girlfriend. Uh, she looked at me. She looked scared and confused. Mm. She couldn't understand the words. <laughs> couldn't understand the chorus. Didn't think it really had a tune. Yeah. Uh, I rushed upstairs. It was one. You know, we have to get up at like seven to get here. Yeah. I was trying to replace the beat, trying to make it work. I'd made it so discordant and odd that nothing would fit. Yes. I had I had like exam panic. Oh. I haven't had that for years. I had like a weird sickness feeling in my stomach. Wow, you take it really seriously. <laughs> well, I was panicking. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, I don't want to let the listeners down. No, good for I you. take the listeners seriously. I agree with you. Because we're I... taking up valuable British, big British castle time. Certainly. Royal time. Royal time. You know, and, uh, I, you know, you I, don't I'm wanna, worried. Absolutely, you don't want to smack the listener in the face. No, it's odd, mine. It's kind of like supposed to sound a little bit... Uh, like African mm. or Funboy 3-ish. I was going down that same route. Were you? With that, Lucky you with that turned around from that route. That, that kind of cricket noise mm, sometimes. Nothing as simple as that in mine. Uh. <laughs> Cause, yeah, because I was thinking the lunatics have taken over the asylum. Mm, kind so of vibe. I was thinking as well. Do you know what I mean? And so what happened with yours? Well, uh, again, I started I started pretty late in the day, and I went down a totally different route before just thinking, oh, no, this is a disaster. Really? Area. So you rejected one? Backtracked, yeah. And uh, I had a good little rhyme going all about, um, uh, I'm so happy in the jungle, I've lost a stone, or something like that. Because I, I love the fact that it seems like uh, if you're a bit of a vain person, one of the fun things about watching I'm a Celebrity get me out of here is kind of fantasizing about... The experience is a kind of health camp. Do you know what I mean? They go in there. Biggins has lost over a stone. He looks amazing. When he came out of the jungle, listen, I'd do him, you know, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> he looks gorgeous. But anyway, so I, I rejected that whole route and I've gone down a different thing entirely. But I was panicking to such a degree that I was going to bring my guitar in and just freestyle. That thought crossed my mind Did as it? well. Yeah. yeah. Well, it'll be interesting to see what we've both done then. Who's, who, who, shall I go first this week? Yeah. Okay. I'll go first. This is my... So, so should we just make it clear again? These are songs about I'm a celebrity. Yeah. Get me out of here. Uh, mine from the point of view of an avid fan. Joe uh, from the point of view of someone who never really watches it. And uh, this is mine. Adam's right now. It'll be fun. I'll fly to Australia. Live in the jungle with some stars on the way. Then when I'm done. I'll no longer be a failure I'll fly back to England and be famous again First three days in the jungle and I'm so glad that I came Everyone at home said I was mad to do it Just for the sake of being famous again But it ended too fast the first time round I want another nibble on the cherry And when people see the real me They're gonna like me very The only problem is the others that they put me in here with If you ask me they're a flipping bunch of tools There's this bloke who used to be some American celebrity Who isn't really playing by the rules Day five, things are going badly. Cause it's all about the yank with the gob. Or the girl with the knockers or the ex-glam rockers. How am I expected to do my job? I ain't getting picked for no bush tucker trials. I spend all my time just moping. It just ain't fair, I'm wasted in there. And now the phone lines are open. I was voted out first. I didn't even get a chance to prove to the viewers on the chuckles and chat. This program's the worst, they make me look like a boring git And if I am remembered, it will be for being crap No, it wasn't fun I flew to Australia, I lived in the jungle and it drove me insane And I got ignored, this whole thing's been a failure I'm flying back to England and nobody again Wow, that's good. That's better than I expected. Yeah. That was good. Thanks, man. You used the same uh, little noise I used for Song for Jack Miller, I think. Oh, Are you really? aware of that? Yeah, well, we're, 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 yeah. in case you hadn't guessed, folks, we use Garage Band a lot. And, uh, Garage Band. Garage Band. And we're pretty much running out of samples. Garage Band is 
is like the production tool du jour at the moment because it's all cleared samples in there so pretty much every show that's coming out on tv next year as well is gonna have just garage band all over it but anyway we better download some new some new samples some I was new thinking, loops yeah should we ever listen to yours now if we must <laughs> okay. so uh this is in the style of fun boy three it's about uh I'm a celebrity, get me out of here that I don't really watch. And there's a couple of things that I need to make clear before you <laughs> attempt to make sense of the following noises. Qualifications. Yeah, right, so, uh, the, um, like, acronym for I'm a celebrity, get me out of here is Iacamu. Yeah, I-A-C-G-M-O-O-H. Iacamu. 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 Oh. Right? Yeah, <laughs> okay, right? Okay, here we go. And then the co- I just gotta explain what the words of the chorus are. <laughs> The words of the chorus are something I've even forgotten what they are, but it's something along the lines of I don't watch it, I've got better things to do. Yakamu, Yakamu, I do not watch it, I've got better things to do. Okay, but that. Be- <laughs> Why are you laughing so much? But because that is uh, done in a kind of fun boy three sort of way, mm. it's slightly incomprehensible. Right. Yakamu, Yakamu, I do not watch it, I've got better things to do. Okay? Okay. Yeah, okay. Cue it. Yeah. a lot less than you <laughs> that's good man for a man is it though <laughs> yeah I, that's better than you were making it out to be it's odd we used the same sample there that kind of bjork style jungle drum yeah did we yeah yeah mm. well so there you go there are the two songs <laughs> uh you can vote adam or joe uh if you want you can just vote for your the the one you like uh the most you know you don't have to be saying that you actually like either of them yeah but the one that you find the most tolerable uh text six four zero four the one you're least offended by yeah text ad or joe and you know we'll maybe we should think of a different competition and do song wars on, on alternate weeks or something i think in the new year we might have to because yeah. it's uh it's it, we've already written an album you know oh. it's, it's not a very good album it's a short album but uh no it's it's 12 songs man really yeah. but they're short songs that some of them are short songs but you know it's not bad for you. the the yeah, ramones jerry Lee lewis the pixies they used to do one and a half uh, minute songs it's uh, it's an acceptable trope so there we go text six four zero four six vote adam or joe and we'll announce who's in the lead at the end of this show and then the the true winner will be can you believe it played again in its entirety at the beginning of next week's show there's something to look forward to now here is the winsome sound of the sundays with here's where the story ends The Sundays here on BBC Six Music. This is Adam and Joe. We're midway through our exciting regular Saturday morning slot here at the Big British Castle. Ooh. Thanks for listening and, and stuff. Sorry, you know? can you not say slot? Sorry. Yeah. You've recently... There's, well, there's been a letter sent round to everyone at the About BBC. slots. You can't really say slot. Ollie on the motorway has texted... Uh, we don't usually read this out this sort of kind of casual uh, radio style text, but he says, haven't heard that song in Yonks. Cheers, lads, for helping brighten up an otherwise depressing and chilly megabus journey 
from Chester to London. Now, do you know about the Megabus, What's Adam? the Megabus? Megabus is very big with young people because it's a really, really cheap coach service. Oh. <clears throat> and you'll see its adverts around the place. You'll see its buses. They're distinguished by a painting of a big chap who's like the Megabus mascot. He's a big, fat, round-faced uh, man mm -hmm. with a little hat on and a bow tie and a kind of Megabus uniform. Um, but he's not very confidence-inspiring. No. The idea that that man, who's painted on the side of the Megabus, would be driving the Megabus, is not confidence-inspiring. This isn't true. Obviously, Megabus are an entirely reputable company. But I always think that, you know, if that big, rotund, <laughs> drunk-looking chap was actually, you know, running that company... Yeah. And it's a bit suspicious that he's only charging, like, a fiver to go halfway across the country... <laughs> So it the bus has the atmosphere of a death trap. The bus itself is not mega, though, right? It's not like no. A, it's just you know, like a like a like a mega breakfast. It's oh, just one of those words to stick would, onto something. I would like it if they, they they'd have to build special motorways and everything to accommodate them, but like a massive <laughs> a giant bus, giant, like a giant plane. Exactly. In fact, the word mega is is usually uh, inverse, isn't it? It's used to denote something that is actually uh, really bad. Is it? Um, yeah, that's the end. Like More me. facts coming up now. Uh, here's the news read by Ra Rachel Matthews and the music news read by Joe Yule. Digital Radio. That's the Jesus and Mary chain. The, uh, the hard boys at school used to like them. We're always they? playing them. They all, uh, we always play a lot of music that the, the, the tough boys at school... We the... always seem to be opening with brag. Yeah. And then having a kind of midway point with some Mary Chain. That's what it comes down to. It's the early 80s, um, you know, this is our target audience. They like yeah. it. This is when they were in their prime. It's good. It's good stuff. This is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. Happy Saturday morning. Uh, the Christmas period, festive period, December period officially yeah. beginning. Ooh. Advent calendars popping open. Exactly. Little chalky nuggets popping out. Have you got an advent calendar? No. No. It's time to get the, the, the decos ready and all that business. Yeah. Can you imagine what? Do you think if you get like a, uh, if you become very wealthy and powerful, you just have insane advent calendars like, uh, what's his name? The, uh, Hugh Hefner. He would, uh, have 25 ladies in a big, uh, kind of box. And so a sort of a lady calendar. Lady calendar, and he'd pop open it. Hello, number three. <laughs> How are you? Hey, Hugh. Happy third of December. Advent <sighs> sort of prosies. <laughs> Well, if you put it like that, it, it wouldn't be sound very so nice. And what they'd be sort of locked in a hatch. Yeah, they'd have what about the Christmas Day one? Well, the Christmas that wouldn't be very nice because she'd have soiled the box. No, because uh, it just <laughs> just like the real, wouldn't she? He no. would get a bit of a festive. I stench. thought listen, I thought it all through. Just like real advent right. calendars. But the point is, the, the chocolate's trapped. The rooms in there. would get bigger and bigger. You see, so right. they'd have more supplies. Ah, the closer you got, because yeah, the Christmas Day <laughs> one, she's going to be in there for a month more or less. <laughs> she's eaten all the stuff as well. Well, yeah. Hugh, so, I don't know. I tell you, I, it, it is quite Christmassy because Hugh on Christmas Day, Chris, <laughs> Hugh goes, "I don't think so. You, you, you just go home, honey." <laughs> she comes and out and sort of. She's had no exercise for a month, and so she's just really what lardy. a sordid business Christmas would be if you had control over it. <laughs> horrible, horrible thought. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we digress. Uh, let's read out some texts for our Text the Nation um, thing, whatever it is, this yeah. week feature. Text the Nation this week. The government have asked us to ask you, the public, uh, about ideas for revitalizing the horror film industry, which seems to have basically um, run out of ideas. Uh, we've had one or two good ones in, but first of all, Adam, have you oh. had any ideas? Well, I've had a couple of ideas. These are not ideas for fully formed films. They're just ideas of, l like, thematically and maybe a couple of scenes. Good. It's good. We'll take anything. What have you got? All right. So, so I was thinking, my logic was, you know, the most horrific thing that you can imagine, right, is that things to do with things you love and things you want to protect, right? The obvious being babies and children. Yeah. So if you have a little uh, baby and child horror in there, obviously nothing too uh, absolutely awful, but uh, I was thinking baby monitors, right? That's got to be a good source. I of like that already. Horror. That's a good title, baby monitor. So you're listening to the baby monitor. There's baby a scene monitor. where the where the uh, uh, the couple, their new baby, they're listening to the baby gurgling mm. on the baby monitor, and then suddenly the gurgling goes low. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. And, and then they, goes, they rush upstairs. And then it goes silent, and then you just hear. <laughs> What's happening? So it's like, has something got in there? Or has the baby turned into something? So they go up there and they're half thinking, oh my god, there's an animal in there. And and then maybe the husband or maybe the wife who's got a bit of postnatal depression, as she's thinking, I don't think you should go in there. I think baby's turned into something. 
Uh, I don't know. Anyway, it's something like that. <laughs> That's good, man. A, an alternative version of that, a mm. bit earlier on in the process, would be when they're at the hospital and they're getting the ultrasound, right? Mm, mm. And so they're listening to the baby's heartbeat. Always a very emotional moment mm. for a, a couple expecting their first child. And then suddenly you hear, Get out. Get, get me out. Do you know what I mean? First of all, it starts garbled. Well, the baby's possessed. The, ba the, ba the ultrasound is picking up the baby's speaking inside. <laughs> this is a good uh, route to go down, though, because technology is always... We fear technology. Yeah. And you make it evil and ka-ching. But what could be worse than the enemy within, especially, you know... Uh, well said, Adam. Baby should be a happy time. Happy, but you've made it sad. I've made it well, horrific. Because I was thinking, <laughs> I was thinking it's about time they had a a, a sat nav horror film, mm. right? Mm -hmm. I don't know quite what it would be, but it would be a possessed sat nav, and it would direct you to a horrible place, a terrible place where something nasty would happen. Yes, and then it would go ha 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 <laughs> when you died. They had a uh, pretty much every permutation of the sat nav is being done elsewhere. There was a sat nav joke on Armstrong and Miller last night. Everyone's doing a sat nav thing, and yep. now we've done one. Here's a good one uh, from Richard Foster that's come in via email. Um, his idea for a horror film is called 28 Seconds Later. Mm. A man wakes up in hospital, can't find anybody for 28 seconds, then he finds everyone. Mm. So it's not a very, yeah. It's he's quite good. He's only because moments of terror, you know, temporary panic, yeah. when you're lost. Oh, you can't find people. I think that's quite good. Well, he could sort of do an existential skew on it and 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 expand those twenty eight seconds into a whole kind of lifetime somehow. Mm -hmm. uh, what I like about it is if the film is only say forty five seconds, <laughs> then you can up the number of screenings per day, still charge full price, and very profitable. That's sound business. Here's here's another one from Tim in in Adelaide, Australia. No. Yeah, he says, "Dear Adam and Joe." He actually says, "Hi, Adam and Joe." He probably says, "Good day, doesn't good he?" Good day, Adam and Joe. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. My horror film would be titled Mere Window. Mm -hmm. All right, like rear window, but like mere it. window. Yeah. A wheelchair-bound astronaut, confined to observational duties due to his disability, uses a super-powered telescope attached to the space station to spy on the people of Earth. I like it. Convinced that he's witnessed a gruesome murder, the astronaut schemes to drop part of the space station onto the killer. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, because rear window kind of pivots around the proximity of the witness to the incident yes here there's a vast distance between the two and the rest of rear window depends on the killer getting into wheelie man's flat mere window and vice versa right. so much more difficult for the <laughs> for the two parties to meet in that one which is dramatically interesting that's lovely well listen keep those ideas coming in folks uh we'll wrap up text the nation towards the end of this hour and of course remind you of song wars in the next hour but still we have so much more to ramble and chat about and great music too now here is foals uh with a track called balloons Enjoy. home of live music on six music uh, yeah live music's always hanging out there and it just doesn't really clear up after itself a lot of the time. Really? Know? Makes yeah. a terrible mess. Just treats the hub like a hotel. Really? And then off live music The hub's goes. getting sick of it. The hub is absolutely sick. The hub know? wants just some people reading audiobooks in there. Yeah, exactly. What would be so wrong with that? Yeah. Uh, do you want to hear a little story, Joe Cornish? Yes, I do. Um, now, I may have told you, Joe Cornish, this story before, but I'm not oh, sure God. I've told our radio listeners. And okay. this, this is a story uh, which involves me behaving in a kind of psychopathic way um due to the uh, adverse effects of um your genetic background various intoxicants yeah mm. um this was a long time ago i hasten to add as well because i would never touch a, uh, so much as a drop of wine these days but um i a long time ago uh, hung out with a uh, former royal ballet star a uh, a contemporary of darcy bustles even um and he is now in whole City occasionally. He's an actor called Jeremy Sheffield. Do you know him? Yeah, well, I, I, hang, I hung it out with him as well. Yeah, exactly. He's a nice Briefly. guy. Yeah, this was many years ago. Though. Yeah, yeah. He's really, uh, he was a really uh, nice chap. Anyway, so we got on quite well. And um, then he came and sort of uh, hung out with me at work one time. I was DJing at the time in this mad restaurant in uh, the West End. And he came and visited me and it was nice to see him. And and then we didn't see each other for a long time. He was very busy. But we bumped into each other in Carnaby Street one time. And this was after his acting career had started in earnest. One and he, time. And he was very busy. One time. 
uh, and he was clearly on his way somewhere. He had somewhere to be, and um, so he wasn't really in the mood for a kind of conversation. Do you know what I mean? Like sometimes if you're just on your way somewhere, you're focused on that, and then you bump into someone that... Sure. Difficult social situation. Have a little awkward conversation. So mm, we had mm, really mm, quite an mm. awkward little chat there on uh, you know, on Carnaby Street, and I felt like we both probably walked away sort of slightly ooh, wincing a little bit, just thinking, mm. ah, I didn't go that well. Anyway, probably him more than you. Probably, I don't know. Who, who, who knows? So uh, a few months passed, and, and one time I was coming from our friend uh, Mark's house. And one I was, time. One time. I was cycling across the King's Road. It was a little, tiny little bit tooty, and... I saw out the corner of my eye, there's Jeremy Sheffield, right? Walking down the King's Road. So, um, but at that moment, as I saw him, he, he saw me, right? But only for a split second, and he ducked down an alley. He didn't want the same thing to happen twice. He was not in the mood Let's for another... Let's circumvent that situation, he thought. Chat. Yeah, and he didn't... He, he thought that, oh, he hasn't seen me. I'm just going to duck down this alley. Avoid Buxton entirely. Avoid, you know, because I'm not in the mood. But he knew you'd seen him. He didn't know. Didn't he? No. Didn't your eyes meet? Well, only for a split second, and because I was on when my humans, bike... When human eyes meet, there's no denying that contact. Uh, I, I, he, I think he obviously thought that maybe I hadn't right. seen, because he ducked down the alley. And, uh, but in that moment, I was just... I became enraged. Do you know what I mean? That's him. Yeah. I just thought, what? You ducked down the alley in order to avoid what may have been an awkward conversation, but nevertheless a conversation. So you pursued him. So I cycled down the alley after him. You idiot. <laughs> uh, not thinking like... I would say that, that I, that's happened to me quite often. I know you haven't quite yeah. finished, but no, no. sometimes you'll pass someone in the street you recognise and you your eyes will meet, but you'll have a little psychic package. Mm. Packet? Package. Package. Exchange. Right. Like what computers do, saying, let's just not bother. Yes, exactly. Do you know what I mean? And you'll just pretend you haven't recognised each other and That's walk right. on. That's what should have happened in the Sheffield situation. Of course, but but because my brain wasn't uh, functioning properly, none of those circuits connected and I you just... You chased him. I chased him. You had it out. And so I went down there and uh, as I arrived at the uh, opening of the alley, he was emerging thinking that the coast was clear. <laughs> so he bumps into me, poor sure. old Jeremy Sheffield. And there I am standing there going, Hello! And I and I had a really mad, starry-eyed conversation with him, saying, "Hey, how you doing?" You know what I mean? Because I hadn't really thought the whole thing through. Obviously, I didn't know what I was going to say. What was on my mind was like, "Hey, why did you avoid me?" But instead, I was just saying, "So, how's things going?" And he looked quite freaked. What out. was the subtext of your tone? Uh, the the subtext of how dare you deny me? Yeah, how? Wh what are you? What are you playing at? Am mm, I so awful? Mm, mm. What's the deal? What have and I what done happened? to you? Well, it was just excruciatingly awkward, and then we parted company, and off I went, just thinking, I'm a nutcase. Now this was about fifteen to twenty years ago. Yeah, but ever since then, mm. I keep bumping into him all really? over the shop. It's like he's. It's become there's some weird sort of unfinished it's like business. You, sh there. you should be friends. Fate has said you should be friends. Yeah. Yeah. but you both are trying to resist it and but but it's always a little awkward because he never fully resolved the awkwardness of that moment mm. and it might be that the whole thing poisoned him quite reasonably mm. against mm. Me, you know what i mean so every he probably his heart probably sinks every time he sees me mm, i know mine does it's like <laughs> it's like uh, jacob's ladder you know it's like the wobbly demons he's everywhere really wherever <laughs> i go and, and until i make peace with him He's gonna. Uh, we're gonna bump into each other for. for you need some kind that. of social exorcist. Yeah, we really do. I just had to uh, exercise. Are you that hoping now. he's listening to this secretly? Someone who knows him might might be pass this on. Yeah. Well, there we go. Uh, we're gonna play some more music now. <laughs> but uh, was that smooth enough segue? Yeah, that was nice. Uh, in fact, we're gonna play some Martin Gay. Um, this is from Martin Gaye's greatest hits very songs. Funny. Did you know, listeners, that Marvin Gaye put the E on the end of his name because he was paranoid that people would think he was gay? That's right, he did, didn't he? Isn't that a lovely little story? That was a bit unnecessary, you know, though, isn't great, it? Greatest voice, one of the greatest talents in the history of music. Yeah. Just a little nervous, little shy, socially paranoid mouse. <laughs> <laughs> That's all he was. Uh, this is called, Where Are We Going? It's a good question. Where are we going? Uh, I'm, I'm just going home after this. All right, let's find out where Marvin's going. Marvin Gaye there with uh, Where Are We Going? That's a lovely song. Now, n uh, New Year's Eve. Plans for New Year's Eve? Adam, it's a difficult time. You know, you're exhausted socially from Christmas and all that business. Then suddenly you've got to pull another big social event out of the bag. Mm. Uh, any plans? I'm uh, going to take, take myself away uh, that. to the country. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just getting out of there. Stay, Checking out. Staying with my wife's family. What's that? Jude's held up. What's that? You're mean? doing a show, are you, Jude? 
yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. we're going to be on air, of course. We're going to be on air on on New Year's Eve. Very exciting. But on the on the it, well, that won't be in the, at night. No, that's no, in the afternoon. It's pre recorded during the day. But in the evening, I've bought tickets for. Uh, a thing that the super furry animals are doing at the Royal Festival Hall. Oh. They're taking over the whole of the Royal Festival Hall. They're playing and they're taking over the whole building. They're doing stuff like in the lobby and in the foyer and it's going on all night and then you will be in the perfect location to see the big fireworks wow. on the Thames. I'm excited about that. That's I've got be some great. friends going to co come along. You're not coming. No. Because you're in the country. Yeah. Uh, but it's going to be amazing and I'm really excited. And we're going to play some super furry animals right now, aren't we? Which one are we playing off of them ones? The gift that keeps on giving. Is that There's a new one? Yeah. Oh, there you go. Let's hear it. Text the nation. Text, text, text. Text the nation. What if I don't want to? Text the nation. But I'm using email. Is that a problem? It doesn't matter. Text. It's text the nation. The nation's uh, favourite uh, segment, feature, item on a radio programme. Mm. Isn't that true? It, it's it's Isn't absolutely it? true. That, that's true. That's a hundred percent true. Hundred percent true, and it's won about fifteen awards. What this segment? This segment has won fifteen. Really? Awards. Well, Adam and me are constantly, constantly at awards yeah, ceremonies. Always at this. awards ceremonies, yeah. and it's been nominated for over mm. twenty-five awards and no, just for over 25 25 25s and we turned a lot of them down because mm. we couldn't be bothered mm. to go and pick the awards up the text the nation subject this week is uh, horror films ideas for re re-energizing the the horror film industry we adam was just saying that he's bought have you bought 1408 yes and you're all excited about I it i bought it because i heard you talking about it and you said oh i watched the first 20 minutes and it was so good that i thought i can't watch i can't waste it now i'm gonna save <laughs> it for a, a day when i can really appreciate it so I thought, oh, there's 1408, the one that Joe loved so much, he had to put off watching it. And now he's just told me, yes, yeah, good for Where, 15 hey, minutes, mean, and then it goes <laughs> rubbish. Well, I didn't know that, did I? It's a very deceptive film. Oh, God. It's really good at the beginning. I bought it on import. It's can like I, I don't want to spoil it for anybody. £20 or something. But can I tell you the worst thing about it? What? Is when the ghosts appear. I'm not spoiling it, listeners. I'm just spoiling a tiny corner of it. <laughs> when the ghosts appear, they're like telly ghosts. Oh. And they've got static rolling across their bodies. Oh, no. But that's not scary. No. What's scary about being a telly ghost? Well, that's like... Because they're from the 50s, so they're like old 50s telly. <sighs> that's like Pleasantville or something, or something out of uh, Minority Report, mm. the holograms. I think there should be a law in horror films to ban um, CGI. Yeah. I think they should do it. One of the scariest moments in any film is in the original Poltergeist. Yes. When they do it all in one shot, when she comes away from the kitchen table... And she does something on the sideboard, and when she comes back, all the chairs are stacked on yeah, the table. Do you remember that? Absolutely. And that's purely in camera. That's practical. Yeah. They kind of whisk the old table out and lower a new one in or something really fast. Brilliant. Very effective. Keep it all practical, yeah? So thanks to everybody who's texted and uh, an emailed for this. Both of you. Both. <laughs> <laughs> no, we've had a... No, I'm joking. It's, it's I'm joking. Quantity's not the problem. Only joking. But you know this... But from the response to this uh, text, the nation, it, it may be that horror is, is indeed dead. <laughs> yeah. Nothing frightens people anymore. The real world is frightening enough. Hey, that's a very... Yeah? You know, I was thinking about this. There's something in Terror Cell, right? What's as, Terror Cell? Uh, the name... Just as, a, as the name of a horror film. Terror Cell. Something... Terror Cell... And uh, it's about instead of zombies, you've got people kind of being brainwashed by extremist groups. Yes. You know, and trying to spread their dirty words. <laughs> That's good. You keep working on that. Okay. Here's one from David Aylcock. Uh, Ali. I don't know. I've said that as best I can. Uh, good morning <laughs> to you both. How about this for an idea for a horror flick? Two radio DJs. What are you laughing at? I'm laughing at that as the best you could say. Well, look. What's his name? Ail Cock? Ail Cock? <laughs> A-L-E-C-O-C-K. Al Alacock. <laughs> You'd be a better newsreader than Ail I am. Cock. <laughs> it just gave me an excuse to say that. Sorry, David. It's very juvenile. Two radio DJs create two songs with hidden subliminal messages. You see, this is an idea that could tie in with this show. Yeah. When they're played back to back, these signals are released and make listeners perform random, 
Grizzly an unnecessary surgery, mm. not unnecessary, unnecessary surgery on themselves. Mm. Oh, that's the auto surgery we were talking about last week. Yeah, uh, there you go. That's tying everything in together. Nice. Do you think that's a good idea? That's good. It's a little bit like is it Halloween Four Season of the Witch, where they the, the TV show has a message that something gets... like that. That's One a confusing those. film, isn't it? To do with oh, isn't it like a toy pump toy pumpkins that have got right, right, a weird chip in them or something? Yeah, yeah. Uh, now, this is an idea that chimes with one of my ideas. It's from Claire Bradbury. She was actually responding to us uh, talking about ghosts earlier. So this is uh, indicative of the response we've had for Text the Nation. <laughs> I'm actually having to shoehorn a non-Text the Nation uh, email in. Uh, but she said we mentioned ghosts earlier when we, play when we played the Beta Band track. She said it's very foggy here. And as we were driving to school with her four-year-old, uh, the four-year-old suggested that the mist was like clouds on the ground. Uh... But the little girl said, no, it's like a giant ghost. We're driving through a giant ghost. Well, that's like the fog, isn't it? It's a bit like the fog. But one of my theories is that I think uh, scientists should investigate is that wind mm -hmm. is ghosts. Is it? Mm. There you go. That wind is actually the spirits of the dead. Uh, but they're completely invisible, yeah. but you can feel them, they blow against you and right. rustle the trees. Whistling One day you. a scientist will make this uh, clear, you know, will discover this, they'll activate some kind of thing in the air, and it'll, just ghosts will be everywhere. Right, they'll adjust the frequency of the yeah. wind, and then yeah. you'll be able to hear yeah. what the wind is yeah. saying. And the and weather so. report will just turn into, there's a strong current of uh, evil demons mm. uh, that will be blowing through the north of England this morning. Mm -hmm. Do you know? Yes, exactly. Isn't that feasible? That's uh, I would say that's 100% feasible. Yeah. There's a there's a song by King Crimson called I Talk to the Wind, which seems to be about that. Might bring it in next week for you folks. It'll be exciting for you, won't it? Yeah. Have you got one more there to wrap up Text the Nation this week, Joe? Or no. Uh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm just flicking through them. That's no it. insult to the people who sent the ideas, thank you. But yeah. we have a very high quality threshold that's true uh, on this program so that's it for text the nation thank you very much indeed for uh, sending us your ideas there uh, right now here's some more music for you this is queens of the stone age that's good isn't it that's the queens of the stone age make it wit chew and uh, sounds a little bit like come together by the beatles as well there in a good way i suppose um now i've got a a, a track coming up that i picked for you listeners and it's a, a musical swerve which might turn some of you off, because I know you like the indie pop and the soul and that kind of thing, but I doubt that many of you are into your uh, trad jazz. But it's just a guess. Maybe there's a, a big secret cache of trad jazz fans out there in the Six Music fraternity. This is a track by Louis Armstrong that I'm going to play you in a second. And uh, I was inspired to buy this because of uh, the Woody Allen film Manhattan, um, because I'm not a massive jazz fan myself, really, although I do really like Louis Armstrong. But, you know, if you're familiar with the film Manhattan, which I imagine many of you will be, you, you'll remember the scene at the end where Woody Allen, a little bit depressed, is talking into his dictaphone and he's talking about an idea for a movie. And he's sort of saying, you know, uh, idea for a movie, group of uh, neurotic people in New York uh, obsess about their neuroses as a way of dealing with the uh, unmentionable and more terrifying aspects of life. But I've got to make it positive. Uh, what makes life worth living? And I've done a little clip of that moment just to remind you. So here's Woody's list of things that make life worth living. All right, why is life worth living? That's a very good question. Um, well, there are certain things, I, I guess, that make it worthwhile. Uh, like what? Okay. Um, for me, uh, ooh, I would say, what, Groucho Marx, to, to name one thing, uh, um, and... Willie Mays and um, the second movement of the Jupiter Symphony and um, Louis Armstrong recording of Potato Head Blues um, Swedish movies naturally Sentimental Education by Flaubert uh, Marlon Brando Frank Sinatra um, those incredible Apples and Pears by Cezanne uh, the Crabs at Sam Woe's, uh, Tracy's Face, <laughs> and, then, mm -hmm. and uh, oh, that's a heartbreaking moment there. When Is it, it says, Tracy's Face? Tracy's Face, what's yeah. The, what's the resonance of that? Because uh, it's um, Mariel Hemingway, the, uh, oh, the extremely underage, terribly underage girl, Mariel Hemingway that mm. he's in love with in this film. 
and he's sort of broken up with her because he knows that it's not uh, a, a relationship that he should be involved with really um and well things were different then things in those days yeah. i mean she's not underage in the film technically i don't think but but still she's much too young to be going out with him and um of course that had resonances in his own life later on but in the film it's really sad and he breaks up because he knows that it's the right thing to do but he just and, and she's very upset mm. and he can't he can't bear to uh think that he's just cast her aside so when he's thinking about the things that make life worth living her face pops back in his mind and he runs after her to say please don't 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 leave because she's going off to study abroad and he's saying come on we can make this work and but she knows that it's the right thing to do she goes off it's an amazing moment anyway that list of things that make life worth living i thought i've got to investigate it you know i love woody allen i love this film and i didn't know anything about any of those people when i first so you're going out with a terribly underage girl yeah so this is what i'm working around to no <laughs> i'm not um i'm happily married to an overaged girl um but i did think well i'm going to investigate some of the things in his list you know what i mean willie mays the the baseball player i couldn't really care about baseball so i, I thought i won't start there groucho marx i've yet to investigate properly do you know what i mean they're good you get the right marx brothers films they're amazing yeah yeah what do you start with duck soup i suppose or Day maybe the races. yeah may either of those Day at the races second movement of the jupiter symphony we were talking about this earlier um, our producer jude says it's great you know, it's still too early for me and Joe to investigate classical music too deeply, I feel. There's too much silly indie pop around. I like it if it's been in films. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, Marlon Brando, of course. Well, he's good, you know. You can't beat The Island of Dr. Moreau, mm -hmm. so I'm with Woody on that one. Um, <laughs> Frank Sinatra, yeah, you know, Frank in Small Doses is pretty good. I'm not like a massive Frank Sinatra fan, but I thought I'm going to go for uh, The Crabs at Sam Woe's, I wouldn't know. That's presumably... It's just a dish at a restaurant. It may have closed by now. Who yeah, knows? Yeah. Um, if you've had crabs at Sam Woe's out there, listener, then let us know what they were like. Do you agree with Woody? Apples and Pears by Cezanne? Yeah, sure. That's very nice and everything. Um, but I thought, I'm going to start with Louis Armstrong's recording of Potato Head Blues. That sounds pretty excellent. Um, so I hope you I hope you enjoy this, folks. This is it. <laughs> There you go, man. That's from 1927. Louis Armstrong and uh, the Hot Fives, or maybe the Hot Sevens, I don't know. Um, and that's called Potato Head Blues. It says in the notes here, same as Willie the Weeper, recorded on May the 11th, 1927 in Chicago. I thought you were going to do, uh, when, you t when you told me you were going to do this bit, I, I thought you were going to do a thing about... You know, lists of li of things you really like and, and love in life that make you happy. Well, I did try and write my own list, yeah. but it was so banal that I thought maybe I wouldn't bother I did one. it out. Yeah. IMAX 3D, fruit smoothies, long Sunday breakfasts, driving over the River Thames at night, fresh bedclothes, falling asleep on the sofa with the telly on, finishing a project and getting paid, uh, getting recognised by someone who likes you, uh, swimming in shallow, warm seawater, tickling a purring cat's tummy, a haircut that's grown to the perfect length, a new item of clothing that makes you look like some kind of a model, uh, walking along the South Bank, the village of uh, Dulverton in Somerset, film, seeing films in foreign countries, going on big roller coasters, getting packages delivered from Amazon, spooning, badminton, spending the whole day in pyjamas, uh, things going wrong on live TV, temporary deafness after a live gig, and coming, from ho coming home from holidays and baths. That's excellent, man. That's a good <laughs> list. Holy moly. Well, folks, you know, if you've got a list out of there, I wouldn't mind hearing it. I should compose a better one. All I got, I mean, I didn't spend very long thinking about mine, uh, but I, I, I put at the top of my list, I'm taking friends and family uh, as read, you know, obviously that's the main thing that makes life worth living. But I've just got on my list, Chinese food, Indian foods, <laughs> sushi, <laughs> the wire, fly to the Concords, my bike, Anton Deck and Marky Smith. That's what a dreadful <laughs> life you lead. <laughs> I like my life. That's good. All those things are wonderful, and I stand by them. But I think there are there are probably slightly more lyrical things, like what you add on your list. That I just read them very fast. It gave the effect of depth. It worked well. I liked it, man. That was a nice. Is list. it more music time now? Yes. What are we having now? Well, we've got a trail. Oh first. yeah, a trail, and after that, we're going to hear the Kings of Convenience. Are we going to go straight into that track? Yeah. So this is a like a, a, a. I'm flagging up the song after this trail. Kings of Convenience with winning a battle, losing the war. But now the trail. It's oh, that's very nice, isn't it? That's, that's delightful. Kings of Convenience. It's a wonderful moment here in the studio, folks. The sunshine streaming in through the windows. A little bit of Kings of Convenience. Just had Joe's inspiring list of things that make life worth living there. And, uh, you know, all, all is right with the world. I was struggling a bit earlier on because, um, you know, that bit in Manhattan, actually, when, when he says Tracy's face, that's one of the things in my 
sort of uh, cultural mind canon that is more or less a trigger to make me blub do you know what i mean have you got things like that that you can't either a song or a moment in a film or something and and it's like a very visceral reaction it's nothing to do with how you're feeling at that point but it's like a switch and you just have to have a little blub about it and that moment is one really of those, yeah you could cry a big good radio it wouldn't <laughs> a little blub come on it would be it would be good i'll have a little cry in Raw the news motion <laughs> oh um yeah, what now? Oh, uh, yeah, the news. And now it's time for the news on BBC Six Music, read by Rachel Matthews, and the music news, read by Joe Yule. Ew. So there. That's the Arctic Yeah, monkeys. and if you didn't understand that, then you're old. Yeah, you are old. You make me sick so old. Hmm. We were just saying that uh, I think the video for that is directed by Richard Ayoade, who is in the IT crowd. He yeah, plays Moss. very, very funny and um, lovely fellow. And it's a good video. You should check it out. It's like fighting clowns. I think it's for that track. Mm -hmm. Pretty sure it is. He's a South Londoner, Richard. Isn't now, he? if you heard the following sting-type jingle, uh, what would you think? Who will win the song wars today? Perhaps it will be Adam, or it could be Joe. Either one. You will be the one who decides by texting or emailing. like led zeppelin mm, it should have been nice. on the it should have been on the mothership you know even though it wasn't technically a led zeppelin track it's just a jingle for song wars i think they should have included it there as the song they watch the mothership their big greatest hits package yeah thing. yeah 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 it's supposed to be wicked it's song wars uh, recap time listeners if you were unable to tune into the beginning of the show this is the part when we replay the the magical songs that we've written for you this week on the theme of i'm a celebrity get me out of here which reached its yawn some <laughs> climax on friday evening or exciting one depending on your point of view and uh, a reminder that if you are voting for these songs during the week which you're welcome to do if you're listening again um please do not text uh, just email your vote to adam and joe dot six music at bbc dot co dot uk is that a capital a on the beginning of adam and joe is that correct don't know if it's case sensitive we don't know it's not case sensitive it's the word and rather than an ampersand as well on mm. adam and, and joe number six so here we go uh, these are the two songs we're not particularly proud of these songs listeners mm. you know we realize they're a bit problematic and and ear stressing uh so that they're, they're quite short but should we start with yours again adam yeah okay then here's my effort this is adam's i'm a celebrity song be fun. I'll fly to Australia, live in the jungle with some stars on the way. Then when I'm done, I'll no longer be a failure. I'll fly back to England and be famous again. First three days in the jungle and I'm so glad that I came. Everyone at home said I was mad to do it, just for the sake of being famous again. But it ended too fast the first time round. I want another nibble on the cherry. And when people see the real me, they're gonna like me very. The only problem is the others that they put me in here with. If you ask me, they're a flipping bunch of tools. There's this bloke who used to be some American celebrity who isn't really playing by the rules. Day five, things are going badly, because it's all about the yank with the gob. Or the girl with the knockers or the ex-glam rockers, how am I expected to do my job? I ain't getting picked for no bush tucker trials, I spend all my time just moping. It just ain't fair, I'm wasted in there, and now the phone lines are open. I was voted out first, I didn't even get a chance to prove to the viewers I'm a chuckles and chat. This program's the worst, they make me look like a boring git, and if I am remembered, it will be for being crap. No, it wasn't fun, I flew to Australia, I lived in the jungle and it drove me insane, and I got ignored, this whole thing's been a failure, I'm flying back to England and nobody again. That's sort of written from the point of view of the first person to be voted out, that's always an ignominious position, you know, you go all the way, and then uh, people just boot you out. I can't remember who was the first out this year. Mark was the first out, was he? The love rat. There you go. Well, that was because of his love rattery. But last year it was Toby Anstis. <laughs> I felt kind of sorry for Anstis because he was clearly excited by the prospect of the whole thing. And then it was like, oh, because he was simply overshadowed by the colossal personalities in the camp with him. 
and it can happen. Yeah, I, I on the other hand, don't really watch it. <laughs> so I've written a song from the point of view of not really watching it, and I must repeat my um, kind of qualifying statements that the uh, acronym for I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here is I am a... I'm... No, hang on. I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here is I-A-C-G-M-O-O-H. The word Iakamu. <laughs> So in I've turned brain. that into a kind of a jungle chant. What, 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 what do you mean in my brain? Yakgamu. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Yakgamu. Yeah. I do not put Jedi go better things to do. Okay, that's what the <laughs> chorus is saying. I've got to explain that every time. And uh, yeah, this is a kind of a fun boy three style African thing, and I can only apologise. <laughs> a lot less than you so there we go text your votes if you want to hear adam's song which was the previous song text add to six four zero four six uh you just heard it what am i saying if you want to hear it if you if you think it's the better one yeah if you think mine is the better one the second one text joe to six four zero four six uh or if you're listening on listen again email your vote to adam and dot six music at bbc.co.uk in it bruv fan yeah wiki Blood. bruv uh believe Believe. No one says that anymore. Doesn't Westwood still say it? Believe, Westwood. Yes, he does. does he? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the winner of uh, Song Wars this week will be played on the show next week. What's our Song Wars theme going to be for next week? That's a very good question. We had a, a good suggestion. We had a good suggestion. Yes, what was it? Yes, it was oh, yeah. uh, closing credit themes for films that never really had one. Like, you know, the end of Men in Black, you've got, Here come the men yeah, in black. Yeah, the majority of films have a kind of rap or a song that in, uh, includes the title of the film over the closing credits. Yeah. So they certainly used to in the good old days. In the good old days. It was days. kind of de after uh, Ghostbusters did such a brilliant job. Yes. That kind of set the, set the tone, didn't it? Uh -huh. There's probably ones before that. But now it doesn't happen so often. Wow, wow, West. Uh, that's a very good one as well. <laughs> and uh, so uh, the idea is that we're going to write um, the like closing credit songs for films that shouldn't really have them. Yeah, or films that never had them and, and we think they and, should and, have done. And need them, yeah. They yeah. could be more serious, like L Lions for Lambs, maybe. No one's seen that, but I imagine it hasn't <laughs> got a uh, Lions for Lambs rap at Can the end. I imagine going to see Lions <laughs> for Lambs? <laughs> Uh, no. At the cinema? No, I can't. Oh, my lord. <laughs> Might be really good. Who knows? I, I can't believe uh, it is. Oh, you, so, so please uh, give us your suggestions for films that you'd like us to write a closing credits song for. The more incongruous, the better. Obviously, don't, don't make it distasteful. You know, if it's a song about... Uh, if it's a film about something really serious or an important historical uh, event... Uh, actually, maybe do send those in <laughs> <laughs> to uh, adamandjoe.6music at bbc.co.uk and it'll be our pleasure to concoct another couple of shoddy, bizarre songs for you next week. Mm -hmm. uh, now, session track time. Is this one that I'm putting my name to? Yes. OK, I'm putting my name to this Joy Division uh, session track, even though, to be honest with you folks, Joy Division is a yawning gap in my music. Have you seen the film Control? Appreciation and knowledge. I have not seen it, but I'm told universally uh, that it's a smash. It's good, yeah. 
Uh, I mean, you're a bit of a doubter about sort of um, music biog films generally. They, they they tend to be a little ludicrous, don't they? I like it. I, I don't know what the listeners think. I enjoyed it a, a lot. I was slightly disappointed. Were you? Yeah, because he doesn't. He didn't actually have that much of a, a life to. Well, he's only. Do you know what I mean? Was he 21 I know, or he's something? Very young. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and what was there was interesting. Mm. Uh, better or worse than um, what was it called? Twenty four hour party people. I mean, I know they're not the same. Very different, but... very, very different. Yeah, Incomparable, yeah. I'd say. But if Control wasn't in black... The main thing about Control is how beautiful it looks. Right. How beautiful he, he shot it, Mr. Photography Man. Anton Corbin. Yeah. He took our photograph uh, once. He did indeed. Yeah, for L magazine. Mm, that's mm, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Us, <laughs> Will McDonald, and Richard Black. <laughs> wrap it up, wrap it up. But anyway, uh, yeah, here's some Joy Division. <laughs> Just ran out of steam there at the end. Just, just got a bit tired. Just got a bit knackered. Uh, that was Joy Division with Transmission. That was recorded as a Peel session on Radio 1 on the wow. 31st of January 1979. That sounded great. It sounded amazing, didn't it? I wonder if Martin Hannett produced that Peel session then as well. Who that? knows? Who knows? Who knows? It's, uh, yeah, mystery, Adam. So, Joe, what were you going on about in the break there? What was I going on about? Well, I don't know whether you're the same as me, listeners, but I love my mega stores, right? Yeah. It's been very much a part of our generation's life is to go up a high street and be able to see a certain mega store, either Tower or Virgin or HMV, maybe. And we, Adam and I, we've talked about this before, mm -hmm. like how central that was to, to our youth. And whenever we went to a foreign city, we'd immediately go to that mega store, you know, the Virgin mega store on the Champs Elysees or wherever it was. And it's it was a nice exciting. Point of contact. Exactly, kind of unity. At one, at once it was familiar and yet uh, foreign. And exactly, the branding would be the same anywhere yeah. in the world, but you find amazing different, mm. like, albums and DVDs and stuff. Uh, things are changing, though, and we've discussed this before, that because of the whole internet, internet thing, <laughs> download generation. Thanks uh, a lot, Tony Blair. Yeah. Shops are, um, <laughs> shops like that are kind of dying. Yeah. And you can tell they're dying because the prices are going right down. Mm. You know, DVDs are almost worthless. The stuff they sell in there, it feels like a jumble sale now. Mm. And there's been a seismic shift, uh, in this kind of trend because the Virgin Megastore, and we should remind listeners that there are many other megastores available out there. Are there? Yeah. Oh. Uh, the big British castle would, would, castle. The big British, the big British castle. <laughs> as Janet Street Porter's, I'm possessed by Janet Street Porter. Anyway, uh, the Virgin Megastore, which is one of these megastores, has undergone a brand name change. Mm. Right. Uh, sometime the week before last, or maybe three or four weeks ago, it suddenly, without warning, became the Zavi the store. The what? The Zavi. Z-A-V-V-I. Uh, the, the one in Tottenham Court Road, which is the one I, I go to quite a lot. Is that an uh, acronym? What's the logic? I don't know. I've no idea. It was very odd. Just one day I went in, and they hadn't even removed all the Virgin posters. They kept the posters, but they just torn the bits off that say, that say Virgin. Seriously. Class. They just cut the corners off the Virgin posters uh, and put Zavi there instead. Literally they'd obviously the Yeah. They'd obviously gone into the, the till computer, and mm. they changed the, the receipt that said Zavi. Right. Uh, but it's all very confusing. I think the... Yeah, it's all very weird, and they didn't give us any warning. Is it still owned by Branholm? No, Branson's out. He's out. He's ghost. He's gone. Right. Yeah? He does not want anything to do with the, the, the retail selling of DVDs and CDs anymore. Right. Uh, and that surely is the beginning of the end. Yeah. When Branholm is out. No. That's too rich for my blood, says Branholm. <laughs> I'm out of here. I ain't selling no DVD no more. For Branholm me. had left the building. So that's, that's the speaks. beginning of the end. HMV's still going strong. <laughs> Hang on in there, HMV. Come on. Oh. What would we do without, like, big shops like that to go mooching around on at the, the weekend? Well, they're, they're sort of going through a little desperate transition phase where they're trying to do things like have kind of computer... Uh, banks there where you can go and download and download stuff, stuff yeah like, wow, that is totally that's what that's what blockbuster think of the future the, there's no way that's going to happen is there the whole nah. point is the convenience of doing that stuff at home well, with a bit of luck those big sort of catch-all mega stores will well, it, it, won't, it won't be lucky if this happens but they're likely to die but that'll see a resurgence of the specialist music store right don't you think the the brilliant kind of niche little uh, cd seller things, yeah, yeah exactly who set who can get like import japanese stuff and really cool stuff mm. yeah that could be a good thing certainly the end we embrace change here at the adam and joe bbc six music show we're almost at the end of the uh, adam and joe bbc six music show what are we going to play david holmes is it stars oh stars a little bit of stars uh yeah let's have some more music right now this is stars with the night starts here that stars with the night starts here. So don't forget, listeners, uh, we'd very much like your suggestions for uh, Song Wars songs. We'd like you to suggest a film uh, for which we will compose a closing credits kind of uh, thing, an inappropriate uh, film that needs a closing credits song. And for Text the Nation next week, 
uh, we're going to kind of stick to that Woody Allen style lists of of kind of little little things that make life worth living. Yeah, the more sort of personal to you they can be, the better, I suppose. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, stuff just... that isn't you know articulated a lot, maybe. Yeah, but that we all share. I'll try and hone my list a little better. Yeah. So do te- <laughs> uh, don't text those in email. Uh, we only receive emails when we're off air. Adam and Joe dot six music at bbc dot co dot uk. Thanks to everybody who's texted and emailed. Uh, this week yes as usual we very much appreciate you listening tell your friends i still bump into a lot of people saying oh you guys should be back on the radio again and i have to say well we are all you have to do is buy a digital radio it's not that hard is it uh but right now i'd like to leave you with a, a final track that i've selected for you listeners this is from one of the excellent atlantic rhythm and blues compilations and it's laverne baker with saved have a good week Thanks bye for bye Oh, it's gone. Liz Kershaw is coming up in a second, incidentally, while we wait for That's Laverne Baker to return. It's broken. We'll is it? Something else. Never coming back. Next week. Shall I sing it? <laughs> I used to smoke. <clears throat> I used to drink. <clears throat> I used to smoke. <clears throat> drink. <clears throat> That's a hoochie coo, but now I'm back on. Here's Liz Kershaw. This she's is gonna, a disaster. She's gonna final sing the two minutes of the, of the show. I have the song for you. It's a. <laughs> What's this? Bit of David Holmes. Not the same at all. Say 69, please.